everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, I am Samiha Durgia and I post videos on Scratch, so please do consider subscribing. Today we'll create a Roadrunner game for which we'll use the vertical scrolling project. If you haven't yet watched it, the link should be on your screen right now or also in the description box below. Before we get started, huge shout out to Kashbi Exciting World for his suggestion. I'm working on it and the video will be up soon. Another shout out to Pineapple17 on Scratch for following me. Thank you all for your suggestions and comments, I really appreciate it. If you have any suggestions or doubts, please let me know in the comment section. If you are not able to comment here on YouTube, you can let me know on the Scratch website. Now let's get started. Alright, so here I have the vertical scrolling project open and in Scratch, since you cannot remix your own project, we're going to use the backpack option to transfer these sprites into a new project. Now I have a video on backpack if you haven't yet watched it, the link should be on your screen right now or in the description box below. Okay, here I have a new project open, which I'm going to delete this original sprite first. And we will get these sprites. Alright, so let's test it. Okay, so it's working fine, but we're going to go to the variables and show the speed variable here. Okay, so the first step in our game would be that we want our player, which is this car sprite. I'm just going to rename it. We want our player to be able to move right and left. So let's code that. So I'm going to get an if then condition. We want to check if the key right arrow is pressed. Then we'll change x by 6. I'm just going to right click and duplicate this. We'll check if key left arrow is pressed. We will change x by negative 6. Alright, so let's test this. Okay, we're able to move right and left, but we're able to move outside the road which is not supposed to be happening, so we are going to change the code a little. I'm going to get an if then condition and we'll wrap it around this change x by 6. So here we want to check if the x position is less than a certain number. So if x position is less than um, here. Okay, 109, I guess we could do 110. And similarly here we're going to get an if then condition but here we want to check if the x is greater than a certain number so x position and here I'm going to check all right so this is negative 111 I guess we could do negative 110 okay so let's test this Oops, here we have a problem that we're able to move outside the road like you could see the wheels here. The outside of the road, this is because it's the middle of the sprite which gives out the coordinates. So we're going to change this a little. Okay, so this is 105. I'm going to reduce the value a little. So let's say 103. And for this, we are going to put it about here. So since, so this one I'm going to do, it's negative 102, so let's say negative 105. And now let's test it. Okay, able to move right and left. All right, this looks good. Now let's move on to the next step. Okay, so we want other cars to appear on our road. For that, I'm just going to right click and duplicate this player sprite. We'll rename it as other. And I'm going to delete this code and we'll change the color. So you could change it to anything. I'm going to change it to a purple. 
All right, so that looks good. Now let's move on to the code. Okay, so for the code, we don't want our original sprite to appear on the screen. We want it to create its clones. For that, I'm going to get a one green flag clicked. We are going to hide it. And forever, we will wait a random number of seconds. So from operators, I'm going to get 1.0 to 2.0. And here we want to check if the speed is greater than zero. We do this because we don't want our cars to appear when the player is stationary, not moving at all. So we're going to check if speed is greater than zero. And here we're going to create another variable, clone count. This is because we don't want it to be too congested like too many other cars come on the screen and our player is not able to move at all, the player will die. So we're going to create a variable clone count. All right, so here I'm going to get an AND operator. In the first space we'll put greater than zero. And we'll check if clone count is less than, let's say four, because we have four lanes. And here when green flag clicked, I'm going to set clone count to zero and we'll create a clone of myself. Now let's move on to the when I start as a clone code. All right, so here I'm going to get a when I start as a clone header block. So when I start as a clone, we want to change clone count by one. And here we are going to make another variable car speed because we don't want our other car speed to be same as the player's car speed. So here I'm going to make a variable car speed for this sprite only okay so here we are going to set car speed to pick random let's say 5 to 22 5 to 22 because the borderline for our player car speed is 20 so we'll make this a little above that Okay, so here we are going to set X to pick random on um, the bodies where negative 103, oh my bad, 103 and negative 105. Now here we are going to get an if then else condition. So we want to check if our car speed is greater than speed. So here, if car speed is greater than speed, we are going to set y to negative 200, which is basically below. So negative 200. Actually set y2, not change y2. So negative 200 and here, else we are going to set y to 200 and now since we hit the original sprite we are going to show the clone here and we'll change its color effect just to make it more appealing visually so we're going to pick random 50 to 90 and here I'm going to get a forever loop so forever we want to change y by car speed minus speed. Okay, so now let's see why we change y by car speed minus speed. Let's assume that our player car is at the speed of 20 and this car is coming from down overtaking us. This means that the speed is greater than 20. So um, it's changing y by two every time. For the second scenario, we have this car coming from up which means that a speed is less than 20. Let's take it as 18. So it's changing y by negative two every time. That was just a simple explanation on why we change y by car speed minus speed. So here we have car speed minus speed. And here I'm going to get an if then condition. 
So here we are going to check if the y is less than negative 190. So here, if the y position is less than negative 190 or it's greater than 196. So or greater than 196. I'm just going to snap this inside the if then condition. Then we'll change colon count by minus one. Change colon count by minus one. And we'll delete this clone. Okay, so let's test this out. All right, since the car speed was fast, it comes from down. Okay, this looks pretty good, pretty realistic. Now what we're going to do is that we want one car to appear in one lane. So let's code that now. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create two list variables. I have a video on that as well. If you haven't yet watched it, the link should be on your screen or in the description box below. So here I'm going to make a list for all sprites. This one I'm going to name it lane. And the next one I'm going to name it lane empty. Okay, so now we're going to go to the backdrops. And here when green flag clicked, we are going to delete all of lane. So delete all of lane. Now this list variable named lane will contain the X positions of the lanes. So we are going to add, so the X position for the first lane can be Let's put it about here, negative 100. So I'm going to add negative 100. Since our player sprite is on the second lane, its X position is negative 35. So I'm going to add negative 35. And next I'm going to add positive 35 for the th third lane. And for the last one, we're going to add positive 100. After that, we want to delete all of lane empty and we'll add yes. We'll add yes four times. So I'm just going to right click duplicate and duplicate these two. And we're going to add yes to lane empty. So it means four of the lanes are empty. Okay, there we have our coordinates and the lane empty, yes. Now let's move on to the code. Okay, so now in the code of the other sprite, what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable and name it lane. So this variable will be the one deciding which lane we are going to go in for this sprite only and okay. So after setting the car speed, we want to set lane to pick random one to four okay so now that we've picked the lane how do we know that the lane we've picked is empty for that we'll have to go through a repeat until loop so we'll repeat until the item lane the variable of lane empty the list variable is equals to yes so from control i'm going to get this repeat until loop and we'll place it below the set lane. From operators, I'm going to get an equals to operator. From variables, we're going to get this item one of lane empty. Item lane of lane empty is equals to yes. So if it's not equals to yes, then we'll repeat this, which is set lane to pick random one to four. So set lane to pick random one to four. And now we want to replace the item lane of lane empty to no. 
So for that, I'm going to go to variables, replace item, lane, the variable of lane empty with no. So the lane is not empty, it's occupied. And here, instead of setting, setting the x to a random number, what we're going to do is we're going to set x to item lane of lane, the coordinates. And here before deleting the clone, what we're going to do is we're going to replace item lane of lane empty with a yes. Okay, so now let's test this out. I'm just going to hide these other variables because it looks too congested. Sorry, we just want the speed to show. Okay, this looks better. Now let's test it. Okay, so we have them in the lanes. All right, this looks good. Now let's do our final piece of coding, which is the if touching other. Alright, so now we're going to go to the player sprite and we'll get another when green flag clicked. When green flag clicked forever, we want to check if it's touching others. Touching other. Then we'll broadcast a message. I'm going to name it end game. Okay, and we'll stop all. All right, so now I'm going to paint a simple sprite. I'm going to choose this rectangle tool and uh, color a light blue. So, yeah, that looks good. I'm going to center it. And using this text tool, I'm going to set color to red. And we'll write, type a message, you crashed. Okay, I'm just going to increase the size. Okay, and we'll place this right there, it looks good. So when green flag clicked, we want to hide the sprite. And when I receive end game, what we're going to do is we're going to show and we're going to make it go to the front layer. Okay, so now let's test this game out. Okay. So since our speed is... Oops, so here we've crashed. This is because we have very less amount of space from the bottom of the screen to where our car is to dodge the car. So what we're going to do is we are going to leave X the same and set Y to zero. That way we have enough time to dodge both cars coming from down and up. Now let's test our game for the final time. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a huge thumbs up. This was again just an idea. You could add many more things, for example fuel. In this we try to make it look more realistic like faster cars come from down and slower cars from up. So I really do hope you liked it. Please don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and follow me on my Insta at Samiha Until next time, bye bye.